Hello again. In our last lesson, we placed some copper and iron in water. We saw that no immediate reaction took place and decided to leave the metals in water until we met with John again. Why don't we go to John's lab and see if there are any new results. We've just taken the experiment out of the cupboard. Sepp was looking at the copper right now. Can you see any difference? No, it's still the same. So copper doesn't react with water at room temperature. But I think we'll notice something when we look at the iron nail. As you can see, there's an orange-brown coating on the head of the nail. This is called iron 3 oxide. So iron does react with water at room temperature. It just takes a long time to happen. The iron 3 oxide that John has shown us, and that you see here as the red-brown coating on the iron nail, is more commonly known as something else. Can you guess what it is? It's rust, of course. Objects that contain iron rust if they're left in the rain or in puddles of water. Salt helps the rusting process along, which is why cars rust quicker at the coast than they do in land. OK, so now we know that the transition metals are really a lot less reactive in water at room temperature than any of the metals from group 1 and 2 that we've looked at. But where do we go from here? You should remember from our previous series that magnesium from group 2 also showed a poor reaction with water at room temperature. Can you remember what we did to get a more vigorous reaction? Yes. We used boiling water instead of water at room temperature to try to increase the reaction of magnesium with water. Can you think why the reaction was more vigorous when we used boiling water? I would like to use an animation to explain this new idea. The kinetic theory of matter says that particles have a higher average kinetic energy when the overall temperature of a substance is increased. If the particles are moving faster, then they will also interact faster. It would then be logical to conclude that the reactions of metals in water would take place more vigorously in hot than in cold water. There is, however, something very important that you should know about this increased reaction with warm water. Even though the temperature of the water is increased, the product's form remain the same because the substance that the metal reacts with is still water. So the reaction will be metal plus hot water becomes metal hydroxide and hydrogen gas. OK. Even though I told you that the products remain the same even if the temperature increases, you should be asking, how can we test for this? We have already seen that if calcium reacts with water at room temperature, it forms a milky white suspension that turns red litmus paper blue, indicating that a basic metal hydroxide called calcium hydroxide is formed during the reaction. We also tested with a burning splint for the presence of hydrogen gas. I'm going to repeat that experiment using hot water. I'm going to get some calcium. Seppel, won't you get me some hot water from that urn there while I get the calcium ready? That should be enough. Thank you. Pour it into the beaker. I'm getting the flask. Putting calcium into hot water. Look and see how it goes. The reaction is far more vigorous. Gas bubbles are bubbling off, and a milky white suspension is being formed. I'm going to test the gas with the burning splint to see where the hydrogen was given off. That's great. Definitely hydrogen. Now test with litmus paper to see if that suspension is basic.
As you can see, when calcium reacts with hot water, the same products are formed. Calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. It only happened much quicker. Do you see that through this simple experiment, we accomplished two important things. We checked that the products of a metal reacting with water at room temperature is the same as when a metal reacts with boiling water. And we proved that this conclusion we made when we looked at the kinetic theory is true. If particles are moving faster, they will also interact faster. Bearing this in mind, see if you can predict the answer to this question. Compared to the reactions with water at room temperature and boiling water, what do you expect to see when a metal reacts with steam? To answer this question, we first need to answer another. What is steam? Well, we know that most substances can occur in three phases, solid, liquid, and gas. Water is no exception. In its solid form, it is ice. If it is heated, it melts to form a liquid, and when it reaches boiling point, it becomes a gas called steam. So, steam is extremely hot water droplets. If we now apply the kinetic theory again, we can predict that the reactions between a metal and steam will be far more vigorous than any reaction we have seen so far. In fact, because the alkali metals were already so reactive in water at room temperature, we won't even try to react them with steam. What we will do is try to get some decent reactions from magnesium and iron. Before we go to the lab, I first want to show you the apparatus and method that we will use for these experiments. Firstly, we will need a Bunsen burner and a tripod. We will boil water in a sealed flask over the Bunsen burner. We also need to place iron powder into a test tube and heat it over a separate Bunsen burner to kickstart the reaction. We then funnel the steam being produced in a sealed flask over the metal sample in the test tube. We will leave a small hole in a stopper in the test tube to allow any gas formed during the reaction to escape. We will use exactly the same method to test both magnesium and iron. Can you predict which one of these metals will be most reactive? Oh, there you are. Have a look here. We're passing steam over some iron. Have a look at what's happening to the iron when I heat it up. The hot steam passes over the iron and just as we heat it up, the iron should start to react with it. We've got lots of steam escaping, but just now we're going to see something else happening as well. As you can see, the iron is changing to a darker color. I'm going to do exactly the same experiment, but this time I've put magnesium into this test tube. Have a look at what happens when I heat up the magnesium. The steam is passing in and passing over the magnesium. You can definitely see water vapor inside the test tube. Oh, look at it, it's starting to glow. Cool. And you can see it's turning white. I wonder what gas is escaping there with the water. I'm going to test it. I think there might be hydrogen coming out with some water. It might not give us a, a pop, but we never know. Look, it's burning. A clear indication that a flammable gas is being given off. John, shouldn't I test with litmus paper for methyl hydroxide? Seppo, that's a really good question. Have a look at the test tube and see what the products have formed here. A white powder, but no liquid. So we can't test for a metal hydroxide. The reaction happened too quickly. Hydroxide didn't have time to form. And you know what? In some metals, the oxide isn't soluble in water. So we only get metal oxides and hydrogen forming. Isn't that something? 
Although we are still working with water, the products of our reactions changed because the reactions were taking place so much quicker. Let's have a look at the equations for these reactions. Iron reacts with water to form iron 3 oxide and hydrogen gas. To balance this equation, we need two iron atoms to the left of the equation, as well as three steam molecules. Now we have six hydrogen atoms as reactants, but only two as products. So we need to multiply by three. Magnesium also forms a metal oxide when it reacts with steam. The reaction is magnesium plus steam react to form magnesium oxide and hydrogen gas. As you can see, this reaction is already balanced. In this series so far, we have continued our investigations into how metals react with oxygen, water and steam. We have also talked quite a bit about the reactivity of metals and what an element's position in the periodic table tells us about its reactivity. Have another look at the metals that we have worked with so far. Sodium, potassium, calcium, lithium, iron, magnesium and copper. Do you think that you could arrange these metals in a reactivity series from the most reactive to the least reactive metal? Arrange the following metals in a reactivity series. Lithium, calcium, sodium, potassium, magnesium, iron and copper. We will answer this question at the beginning of our next lesson. Thank you for joining me today. See you next time. Goodbye.